Hello, my awesome students. So today we are going to learn about what are adaptations. And some of you are more familiar with it than, than others, um, but we want to make sure that we understand exactly what an adaptation is and some examples that we find in our organisms. And remember, an organism is a living thing such as a plant or an animal. Um, you have your handout, you fold it and glue it on page 108. And um, when you're ready to get started, um, let's make sure we write down the definition of an adaptation and the blank spot up top. And then whenever I talk about an adaptation, you're going to put the word in the little bubble. Okay? All right, so the first thing we need to know is what is an adaptation? Okay, so your official definition that you need to write down is that an adaptation is a structure or a behavior that helps an organism to survive in its environment. And, I mean, just think about the different organisms that you've seen before. You know a fish is built to swim in the water. Other organisms can't survive in the water. Okay, fish have certain things that help them to survive in the water. Or a duck's feet. Okay, you've looked at a duck's feet before, right? They're, they're webbed. Okay, not every organism has webbed feet. Those webbed feet are going to help it survive in its environment. Okay, so that's what an adaptation is, and it can be a structure or a behavior. A structure is like a body part, um, like the webbed feet. Um, a behavior would be like an action. So some organisms hibernate or migrate. That's an action that they do, so that would be a behavior. Okay, so let's find out about some adaptations. Okay, so we're going to get some bird adaptations. They have quite a few. Um, so the first adaptation are feathers. Okay, feathers are a very important adaptation. Without them, they can't what? They can't fly. No matter how light their bodies are, if they don't have those feathers, they're not going to be able to fly. Um, so one adaptation you want to write in the little bubble is feathers. Another adaptation that birds have is the shape of its beak. Okay, it's going to help it get food. Depending on the shape of its beak is going to determine what kind of food it can hunt and catch. Okay, so let's look at some examples. Okay, so here's a bird. Look at his beak shape. Okay, this is a finch. Um, they mostly eat seeds. Their beaks are made to crack the shells of seeds. Okay, so that's an adaptation. The way that that um, beak is structured helps it get the food that it needs to survive. And so another one you're going to write down is beaks. So the shape of the beak and you should have feathers written down in the bubble so far. Um, another one is, look at this heron. Okay, it's got a really long beak. Okay, that, look at how pointy it is. That lets it spear fish. And if you don't know what spearing is, it's kind of like fishing. So that beak, they can poke it into the water and they can just pinch that fish and, and then gobble it up. Okay, so the other beak, could it do that? No, because it's not long enough. Okay. The next one is a hummingbird. Okay, so look at theirs is even skinnier and pointy, and that allows them to get that nectar out of the flower. Okay, so you can see the shape of the beak is going to determine um, what kind of prey it hunts. Um, it's going to determine what it eats. Okay, all right, so let's look at another. Oh, here's another example of the duck. Okay, so the duck has several different adaptations. Okay, um, the webbed feet helps it be a strong swimmer, and the feathers. Um, they have, they're coated in oil and that makes it waterproof so that when they're in the water, those feathers, because you know if you take in too much water, it gets heavier and heavier and that's going to cause it to sink and we don't want the duck to sink in the water. Um, so it has that coating, which would be an adaptation that makes it waterproof so that it can swim in the water. All right, so here's a couple of other adaptations. Um, so let's look at our little sea lion here, or seal. Um, a lot of people think they eat crabs, but guess what? They don't. They actually eat krill, um, which are very small shrimp, and their teeth are adapted so that they can um, sift krill from the water, so that they can basically just pick it up from the water. Um, so another adaptation you want to write in your little bubble map is teeth. Okay, different organisms have different shaped teeth to help them hunt their prey. All right, let's look at this little flounder. Um, so another adaptation that you want to write down are eyes. So this little flounder, he has eyes on the same side of his body, on the top side. That's going to allow him to see his surroundings a lot better um, so that he can hunt for his food. And then here's our little polar bear, and they've got a thick coat of fur. And that thick coat of fur allows them to stay warm. 
Okay, and again, they also have those claws in their teeth. So another one that you want to write down is fur. Okay, so fur is going to help keep them um, nice and warm. And some organism, actually, their fur color can change. And when it's in the winter, it changes to white so that they blend in with the snow. And they can hide from their predators a lot, a lot easier. Okay? All right, so a lot of adaptations protect them and help them avoid being eaten by predators. Remember, the predator is doing the hunting and their prey if they're being hunted. So let's look at some examples. Um, so here, this is what I was just talking about. This is like a, this is a bird, um, and in the winter, you can see the bird turns white, and that helps him blend in with the snow, but in the summer, that's what color he is, and that, he's going to be able to blend in easier with the trees and the leaves and the stems, so he can camouflage and hide from his predator. So you want to write color in another bubble. That is another adaptation, the colors of the skin or the fur changing. Okay, sometimes bright colors may warn the animal, uh, may warn predators that it's poisonous. Okay, so if the predators see that bright color, so you've already gotten color written down, but that's why color is also an adaptation. And then we also have um, like stingers and quills and smelly sprays. So you want to write down smells, okay? Um, that's another adaptation is like skunks can release an odor that's going to, you know, that's going to scare any predator away. Um, other things like jellyfish and scorpions, they have stingers, okay, that's going to help protect themselves from their predators. Um, another one that you want to write down is spiny, spiny or spines, okay. We saw that in the cactus. Um, animals can also have spines like the hedgehog and the, the turtle has little pokey things and a hard shell to help avoid getting eaten. Okay, um, Another two cool adaptations, so there, here's two more to write down in your bubble map, is camouflage and mimicry. Okay, so on the left here you see the frog. Okay, it's hard, it's a little bit hard to see him because he's camouflaged and he's blending in with his surroundings. Here is a picture of an owl, but if you look to the right, that is actually a butterfly. And this butterfly has what we call eye spots, and it's mimicking to look like the owl. So those eye spots will allow predators to think that it's an owl, and so it's not going to hunt it and eat it because it thinks it's another organism. So you need to write down camouflage, and then you need to write down mimicry. Okay? Um, instincts are another adaptation, and we're going to be talking about instincts a little bit more um, later this week and next week. Instinct is something that they're born with. It's inherited. Um, and a couple of, I, in, it's a behavior. So it's something, a behavior that's inherited from their parents. It's passed along. And some examples are, you know, like, like little ducklings. They follow their mother. Um, bears hibernate. Some birds and butterflies, they migrate. So those are behaviors that they're automatically born with. They just know to do it. Um, no one has to teach them it. It's an instinct that's inherited that they just know to do this, and it helps them survive. Um, so like here is migration. So in places where the winters are really cold, a lot of animals can't survive out there in that cold. So um, they travel and they migrate to the south like birds. Um, so migration is just in search of food or a place during the winter so that they can reproduce. Um, the next one is hibernation. Okay, We are pretty familiar with hibernation like bears. So um, when the temperatures are really cold outside, they hibernate. And that allows them to conserve energy and be able to survive in when they aren't hibernating. Um, so here's just some interesting facts about hibernation, but you want to make sure that you wrote down migration and hibernation in the bubbles. And if you run out of bubbles, just add a little, um, you know, you can just add it in even if it doesn't have a bubble, just add a little line. So here's just a picture of some bears hibernating. Um, so they're just, they're storing up that energy so that when winter is done, they've got all the energy they need to survive. Okay, all right, so those are adaptations. So this is what your journal page should now look like. Um, remember, an adaptation is a structure or a behavior that allows it to survive in its, in its environment. And these are just many examples of adaptations. They are not our only examples, um, but they are quite a few. 
Um, so we will talk a little bit more about some adaptations, especially some plant adaptations um, by next week.